In this last tutorial on the Media Encoder, I just want to talk about watch folders and what watch folders can do and what they can't do and how useful they can be. Now, a watch folder is a folder that you create that you can drop a footage item into that Media Encoder is always watching the watch folder and when it registers that a movie file has been dropped in, it re-encodes that file to whatever formats you have chosen to re-encode it to. You cannot drop in, at the moment, sequences or compositions. So I can't drop in a Premiere Pro sequence into the watch folder and it'll then watch for the sequence arrival and encode that out to various file formats. Hopefully that'll come in time. At the moment, all it can take is a movie file and output different versions. Now, I know one customer who used to always edit in Final Cut Pro and what they used to do is they used to bring in an AVCHD file and they used to encode it immediately out to ProRes. The reason that they would do that is so that they could encode natively inside Final Cut Pro. Now obviously you haven't got those kind of problems with Premiere Pro. You don't need to transcode to different codecs so that you can edit because Premiere Pro will edit in all of them. However, those are the sort of reasons that people might do it. Or people might say, well look, we've got the big version out, we've done the final version, I'd like to have smaller versions for different devices taken from the original high quality version. So how do we do it? Well we've got the watch folder item down here and we can click the add folder button and when you click to that you can actually navigate to where you want the folder to be created. So I'm going to go to my desktop. You could already have created a folder that you can then use or you can make a new folder which I'm going to do. I'm going to call it watch folder. Now obviously I'm calling this watch folder which is generic. If you're working with a particular customer you'll probably have a customer watch folder and you might have multiple watch folders again for your multiple customers. So we've got the watch folder selected which will probably have a customer name in your case and click OK and it adds the folder down here with a default which was the last one I was using. So it's got a preset on it and exactly the same way that we added presets over here in the queue we can add presets down here to the watch folder. So for example I can go to web video and I can go and say well I want a Vimeo one as well as a YouTube and I can take the 720 Vimeo and drop that down. I can add it to either below or on the name or I can put it over the actual item that's here and replace it. I've got the replace arrows. I'm going to add it to it and I'm going to say okay I also want to output to a couple of devices. So I'm going to go up to my devices here and I'm going to choose Apple iPad 2 so take that one and add it in and an Android pad let's take the Android pad we've been using before actually let's take a small one there's a 480 so I can drop that in so I've got four outputs sitting on the watch folder so when I drop a footage item into this watch folder which is now on my desktop Media Encoder is going to watch for it and then Media Encoder is going to output the various versions now I don't want to spend ages demonstrating this so I'm actually going to delete a couple. I'm going to delete that one, just click the remove button here. Yes I do want to remove it and I probably want to remove that one there. So in actual fact we're just going to do two smaller ones, a 720 and a 480. Just to demonstrate how it works. And there's that watch folder sitting there. It's called watch folder. And as I say yours would probably be with your various customer names. So if I go to my desktop and I take a little piece of footage, I've got a small MPEG-4 movie here drag it and drop it and let go on the watch folder and then go back to Media Encoder and watch what happens. Obviously it's got to pick it up so it'll take a moment or two to register it's there. And there it goes. It's brought them both in. Notice by the way I've got also auto encode watch folders ticked up here. So it's going to auto encode it. It's watching the watch folder and will auto encode it and it's going to complete one and then complete the other. As you can see the time means nothing. OK, so those are done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that folder. So I'm going to navigate to my desktop and I'm going to navigate to the watch folder and open that. And you'll see that I've got two folders inside the folder. One is the source, which was the original source that I put in. And notice it is done by date. So the 4th of December 2012 at 2.37 and 54 seconds when it was dropped in there. And if I open that up, there is the original source go back to the watch folder and here is the output and you'll see that I've got the two versions they're going to be different sizes and I can double click on either of those just to play them and you can see you've got the example re-encoded to whatever we want so that'll be the 720 and this will probably be the 4 whatever it was I can't remember off the top of my head 
and there we go that's the smaller version so we've re-encoded it simply by having the watch folder waiting for us and off we go so that's the advantage of watch folders it would be brilliant if you could drop sequences or compositions actually into a watch folder and have them encode out but that'll probably come in time I suspect so the media encoder it has been redesigned in CS6 in an extremely powerful way as you can see it's very easy to use and you can also see that we've got lots of information that we can easily find out about every single one of our presets we can see the bit rate that they're encoding with we can see the size that they're going to be and as we showed before you can always right click on one and actually go to the preset settings and even modify them and, and create your own versions for your customer as they need if a standard version won't work